Question four moves us into the electrons, waves and photons side of the course. And it begins with a simple uh, recall question. Name the charge carriers responsible for electric current in a metal and then an electrolyte. When, well, you should know that in a metal, electric charge is carried by electrons. And that in an electrolyte, it is carried by ions. There is one mark available for getting both of those correct. Part B, a copper rod with a cross-sectional area given to us there is used to transmit large currents. A charge of 650 coulombs passes along the rod every five seconds. We need to calculate the current I in that rod. So to do this, we can look at what we know. We know the cross-sectional area, we know the charge, we know the time. In this occasion, the equation we need is Q equals IT. The charge is equal to the current times the time, which means that the current is equal to charge divided by time. We know the charge is 650 coulombs. The time during which that charge passes is five seconds, which gives us an answer of 130 amps. Part II, the total number of electrons passing any point in the rod per second. We know that in one second, 130 coulombs of charge flows and we know that each electron has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs so to find out the number n the number of electrons passing the point we need to divide 130 by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and that gives us 8.13 times 10 to the power of 20 electrons per, per second. Now, this kind of question, it's often difficult to remember whether you should multiply or divide the charge by the number of electrons. So you need to apply some common sense. If you were to multiply the numbers together, you would end up with a very, very small number. So we need to recognise that we're looking for a large number here. We're going to expect a lot of electrons to pass through the rod each second, uh, which is exactly what we've got here. 8.13 times 10 to the power of 20. And part III asks us to find the mean drift velocity of the electrons, uh, given the number density of free electrons is 1 times 10 to the power of 29 per cubic metre. So for this, we recall our equation on the formula sheet that I equals a n e v where i is the current a is the cross-sectional area n here it's not the same n as we just worked out above this is n the number density 1 times 10 to the 29 in this case e is the charge on an electron and v uh, is our mean drift velocity so we need to rearrange to get v is equal to i divided by a n e which gives us 130 is the current divided by the cross-sectional area, which if we scroll back up the question, we can see is uh, 3 times 10 to the minus 4. Multiplied by the number density, 1 times 10 to the minus, two, sorry, 1 times 10 to the positive 29. Multiplied by the charge on an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and that gives us a mean drift velocity of 2.7 times 10 to the minus 5 meters per second. Part C shows us uh, our copper, copper rod here which has been labeled X is now connected to a longer thinner copper rod called Y and asks us to state why the current in Y must also be I. So in other words, why is the same current present in both X and Y? Well, this is an example of Kirchhoff's first law. The sum of currents into a point is equal to the sum of currents out of that point. So in other words, there's nowhere else for the current to go. 
charge can't be created or destroyed, so if the current's flowing through X, it always has to flow through Y. Part II tells us that rod Y has half the cross-sectional area of rod X, so we need to calculate the mean drift velocity of electrons in Y. You'll see there's only one mark here. It's not asking us to go right through the calculation again. What we can say is that I equals A N E V. So we rearrange that to get V equals I divided by A N E, as we did earlier. We know that the current is the same. We know that the number density hasn't changed. It's the same material. And we know the charge on electrons are constant. So we can say that velocity is inversely proportional to area. So A is halved. Therefore, V is doubled. So V equals double our previous answer, which is 5.4 times 10 to the minus 5 meters per second. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and visit cowanphysics.com.